A platform and brand as big as Xbox is led by disciplined roles with experience in marketing, software, and community trends. No one has been more center stage and out front quite like Microsoft and Xbox's Phil Spencer. With a contagious smile, humble, bashful demeanor, and an underlying confidence that comes with decades of experience, knowledge, and industry with a pulse on the needs behind and within the gaming world. Phil Spencer's effect on the video game industry is far-reaching, trend-setting, and also disruptive in many positive ways. This is a look at the Phil Spencer effect. This is Colt Eastwood. Welcome to the channel. If you end up enjoying this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel and hit the bell to be notified of new content. With that taken care of, let's take a look at the head of Xbox. Xbox is led by Phil Spencer, a Gen X gaming and tech fan from California, now an honorary native of the Pacific Northwest. He graduated from the University of Washington and made the Seattle-based area his home, starting his career with Microsoft as an intern in the late 80s, around the time gaming was flourishing with the Nintendo Entertainment System. During the years that gaming was growing to multiple new consoles like the first PlayStation and Nintendo consoles, Phil Spencer was leading the development of Microsoft's first CD-ROM-based titles such as Microsoft Encarta and many other Windows 95 software packages. Into the 2000s, as the internet boomed and online gaming was becoming a reality, gaming itself was growing faster than ever with big budget games and Microsoft entered with the original Xbox in 2001. Phil Spencer served as general manager of Microsoft Game Studios, working with Microsoft's European developers and studios such as Lionhead and Rare until 2008 when he became the general manager of Microsoft Studios, eventually becoming the studio's corporate vice president a year later. Phil was frequently seen on stage at events and participated in Microsoft's E3 conferences 17 times. Since 2010, while the Xbox 360 was leading the market and striking deals with dozens of third-party studios under Phil's direction. When Xbox as a brand was at their peak, around 2013, the team was ready to announce the Xbox One for next-generation consoles under the direction of head of Xbox, Don Matrick. This was a critical turning point for Xbox, and as Don Matrick led announcements for the Kinect Xbox One in 2013, Phil Spencer was behind the scenes gathering momentum for third-party exclusive deals making Sunset Overdrive, Rise Son of Rome, and many other game deals to launch on the new Xbox. One of the major faults of the Xbox brand in 2013 was Don Matrick's push for the all-in-one entertainment box. He was pushing to pair with Windows 10 as a media center for music, movies, and games. And TV. TV and movies. TV. Xbox. Watch TV. At this time, Phil Spencer was chief of Microsoft Studios and was responsible for Xbox having a great exclusive lineup on the Xbox 360 and games for the first two or three years of the flailing Xbox One. Blame for the launch of the Xbox One was put on Don Matrick who just as the new consoles launched was on his way out with an offer to work for mobile game publisher Zynga. Phil Spencer was asked by Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella to lead the Xbox platform and Microsoft Studios as a part of the Windows and Devices division, essentially giving Phil Don's tasks, rights, and responsibilities while retaining his own to recover the damage that had been done to the Xbox brand with Kinect, DRM, and TV on a gaming console. What happened next in the opening years of the Xbox One generation are wildly speculative, non-disclosed, and at worst, generally unknown to the gaming community. Phil Spencer was asked to lead the Xbox platform as a whole and move it back into a competitive space with the dominating PlayStation 4 and slumbering Nintendo trailing behind from troubles of an underselling Wii U. The first step for Phil Spencer as a platform leader was to bring backward compatibility to the Xbox One, something that had been abandoned for the new consoles with major architecture and hardware differences. In 2015, Phil led the software and hardware teams with a revolutionary emulation solution that allowed hundreds of Xbox and Xbox 360 titles to be natively played on the Xbox One. And this movement 
even when the Xbox One had a few big new exclusives, re-energized the brand and fills ushering of more games and legacy support of the games you own coming with you to new hardware, built a mass of goodwill when PlayStation's leadership was asking fans to pay a service fee to play games they may already own on a streaming service. At this time, the Xbox One was about to launch their biggest games lineup in console history with several exclusives that Phil Spencer had shepherded for the Xbox One with Gears 4 and Quantum Break being big AAA offerings and potential system sellers. Phil Spencer announced Play Anywhere, an Xbox system that unified the Xbox console and PC platform by releasing a game on PC and Xbox at the same time, cross-play, cross-save, and cross-compatible. Two games for the price of one. Unfortunately, this also meant that Xbox would no longer have true exclusives and that any new game would release on Windows PC and you didn't need an Xbox console to play something like Gears 4. Fans of their specific console didn't always like this idea, but the industry as a whole applauded it. Xbox was getting bigger and offering more flexibility and choice to consumers. Things were finally looking up for Xbox with the Kinect dropped, trust regained with DRM backed off of the used games and a lineup of exclusives and back compat being added each week. But behind the scenes, Phil Spencer was trying to grow the brand and get more games to the platform while Microsoft Executive Vice President Terry Meyerson was allegedly losing interest in the Xbox brand and in turn refusing to further fund first party development. Simply stated, the vice president of Microsoft wasn't willing to approve the money needed for Phil Spencer to have more games built for the Xbox. To further exacerbate the exclusive games problem, Phil Spencer had to make the tough decision to cancel Fable Legends and Platinum Games Scalebound, two major games used to market customers to get an Xbox One. Platinum Games took full responsibility for Scalebound's cancellation asking for more time and money beyond what was acceptable in a delayed game, while their teams delivered several other games, including titles for PlayStation, while under contract with Xbox. Phil Spencer, still head of Microsoft Studios and still running Xbox's platform, was asking Microsoft for more money to build studios and garner deals with big games to keep up with PlayStation, and was flat out told no. As Microsoft leadership decided if Xbox should be a business venture worth funneling money into. It was this time, around 2017, when Xbox had their lowest year in exclusive games offering, that Microsoft was at a crossroads to leave the Xbox project to naturally run its course or fund it into a money making venture. Coincidentally, Terry Myerson, Vice President of Microsoft, transitioned into another company and out of Microsoft for good. In September 2017, Phil Spencer was promoted to the senior leadership team, gaining the title of Executive Vice President of Gaming and reporting directly to Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella. This was when the era of Phil Spencer's Xbox really came into light with the ushering of his Project Scorpio, a powerful mid-generation console set to launch in holiday 2017. Excitement for Xbox was at a new high and fans were waiting for killer games to show off the new hardware. It was an uphill battle for Phil with first party titles and third party games rating and selling lower than average. But Phil had convinced Satya Nadella that Xbox was a financial opportunity and that gaming was bigger than ever, topping the movie market in many ways. Phil Spencer and his team, thanks to Mike Ibarra, devised the incredibly successful Xbox Game Pass model, a subscription access monthly service pass with hundreds of games across multiple genres and included all brand new first party exclusives. Game Pass won over the industry immediately and fans joined by the millions, reaching almost 20 million strong in about two years since its inception. Phil definitely had his hands full juggling the many facets of Xbox with new expanded features that no other platform offered, let alone needed to manage and cultivate. In 2018, Phil had decided to pass on Microsoft Studios responsibilities to Matt Booty and change the name to Xbox Game Studios and let a dedicated person like Matt 
manage, grow, and acquire studios with a new source of funding that was threefold from what Phil had worked under previous leadership. With exclusives in the works for Xbox, with the first batch expected to release some three to five years down the road, Phil Spencer was very vocal about exclusive deals and the state of the industry regarding keeping games off of other platforms. At this point, Xbox had normalized the offering of games to PC and Xbox, with timed and third-party exclusives coming to other platforms later if Xbox didn't own the franchise or studio. Phil Spencer said, Gaming is about entertainment and community, and diversion and learning new stories and new perspectives. I find it completely counter to what gaming is about to say that part of that is to lock people away from being able to experience those games or force someone to buy my specific device on the day that I want them to go buy it in order to partake in what gaming is about. Gaming is bigger than any one device." Close quote. Phil Spencer has a strong opinion about exclusives and his actions on the Xbox platform have shown that exclusive games matter even if they are timed and hold off gamers from playing new titles if they don't play on Xbox. But in this quote, he is really referring to PlayStation and Nintendo when he says, gaming is bigger than any one device. Traditionally, if you want to play a PlayStation exclusive, you have to buy a PS4, and if you want to play a Nintendo exclusive, you have to buy a Nintendo Switch. Xbox, however, thanks to Phil Spencer's changes, means that PC gamers and Xbox owners can play the games exclusive to the platform and not be restricted to one piece of hardware and its limitation. But Phil wasn't ready to stop just at PC and Xbox. In 2019, he announced that his team had been working on a game streaming infrastructure of multiple server farms around the globe to allow Xbox gamers to play on console, TVs, tablets, PC, and mobile devices on xCloud, an Xbox hardware-based server system that literally takes your games on the go and frees them from the console to almost any device. This is what Phil meant when he pushed for the industry to free up gaming from a singular device. This is something the competition refuses to do, where the music and movie industry already allows you to take your purchases wherever you go. Fortunately for Xbox, the platform can truly expand while still remaining an exclusive platform. Phil Spencer has created an environment where you can play on any device while still remaining an Xbox customer since Xbox and Microsoft have the PC platform within Windows Xbox consoles with cross-play across generations, and cloud infrastructure owned and managed by Microsoft for Xbox game streaming. Xbox puts you at the center is a quote that you'll hear Phil Spencer repeat often, and gaming is for everyone is another cornerstone of Phil Spencer's leadership, and the development of the adaptive controller is a design and groundbreaking realization for gaming fans of all demographics and abilities. The adaptive controller is a hallmark of industrial design, accessibility, and millions of opportunities for people with different physical challenges. Even expanding the accessibility to playing games with the movement of your eyes. Showing the world that Xbox wants everyone to play, whether it be on a console, a controller they feel comfortable with, or on a device in the ecosystem that they want to play on. Phil Spencer encouraged the hardware team to build the next world's most powerful console with Project Scarlet to become the Xbox Series X. Phil had two requirements for the powerful new console. It had to be cool and it had to be quiet. The Xbox Series X is a marvel of engineering and Phil wanted passionate players to have access to a powerful PC-like experience with fast loading times, fast frame rates, and quick response to the hands and to the eyes. Phil understood that gaming is an expensive hobby and offering Game Pass and Play Anywhere meant that gaming on Xbox could be more affordable and more value-oriented than ever. And that wasn't enough. To accomplish two objectives, he led the team with an affordable console option called the Xbox Series S, a smaller economy model that would also double as the internal framework for xCloud game streaming in server blades. Add to that, Xbox All Access, a monthly payment plan paired with Game Pass Ultimate for $20 to $30 per month to get either new console. During this critical buildup of time for Xbox, Phil Spencer directed Matt Booty, head of Xbox Game Studios, to acquire new talent, new teams, and new studios to the Xbox family, taking the team from about 10 studios 
2-23. Phil and Matt brought in veterans, playground games, and undead labs, and then added Obsidian and In Exile and much more. By 2020, Xbox had started an agreement to acquire ZeniMax and Bethesda Studio families, more than doubling the talent on the docket for Xbox first-party games. Despite the troubles, downtimes, and state of Xbox behind the competition in sales, Xbox is doing remarkably well, and Phil Spencer is well respected by the industry for his tenacity, dedication, and inclusive outlook for the gaming industry. Crossplay is growing because of Xbox. Exclusives are expanding beyond one console, even on PlayStation because of Xbox. Games are playable on mobile screens because of Xbox. Games subscription services are gaining popularity with included new games because of Phil's push for Game Pass. While PlayStation and Nintendo have been shuffling leadership and changing in small increments, Phil Spencer has remained a forefront face and guidance for how the gaming platform should evolve. He has been with Xbox during its biggest moments and worked through difficult times, working his way through leadership to become a driving force and an influential voice not only for Xbox, but for a respected voice in gaming worldwide. Phil Spencer may not be leading the Xbox platform forever, but his impact on the console, PC and cloud gaming space will forever shape the way we buy, access, and play our games. This is Colt Eastwood. Thank you so much for watching. This was a lengthy video and I hope many of you made it this far. The purpose of this video was to highlight the troubles and changes Xbox has made over the past several years. It's important to note that at one point in time, Xbox was almost axed or left to just fizzle out around the time Project Scorpio was ready to launch. A lot of people assume that games were in mass during Don Matrix's reign for Xbox, but that just isn't really the reality. Phil was cranking out game deals and pushing new unique games, and during that time, he was responsible for the Xbox first party games and fought against the grain to keep that funding alive. I've spoken to a few people at Xbox over the years, and it's interesting to see their passion to bring content to their fans and dealing with a two to three year downtime in 2016 through 2019 when they didn't have games ready or in the works has been very difficult. Reporting on Xbox on this channel has been equally challenging knowing that building studios and games in 2018 meant that games would not be ready to launch until 2021 and 2022. But now Xbox has a lineup of first party content to fill each year with almost a dozen games each year for a very long time. If you enjoyed this video and learning a few things about how we as gamers and Xbox fans got to this point, show your support by simply clicking the like button. That means a lot and it gauges the quality of the work. Subscribe if you haven't, that's free, and you'll get weekly content like this. More than just gameplay, thoughtful research information about gaming with high quality footage and visuals. If you want to support the channel further, you can join the channel membership or Patreon and get early access to videos before they go live and you'll automatically be entered into monthly games and merch giveaways. Thanks again for watching, enjoy your week, stay safe and please be nice.